come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. The greatest poet dramatist in the English-speaking theater, or perhaps in any language, is William Shakespeare, whose body was laid to rest 360 years ago, but whose spirit is as alive today as it will be in another threescore years or millennia. This begins our salute to the master, not in the soaring poetry of his words, which would be presumptuous for this series, but to the enduring excitement, suspense, and mystery of his tragedies, adapted especially for our audience today. Dramas as gripping and tense as any of the stories I have brought you in the past two years. Our mystery drama, Murder Most Foul, was especially adapted from William Shakespeare's classic tragedy, Macbeth, for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Kevin McCarthy. It is sponsored in part by Greyhound Package Express and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The simplest of historical notes are enough to make this story as up-to-date as any murder on your newspaper's front page. Greed, passion, and revenge are as alive in our society today as they were in the Scotland of that time. This was a country of clans, warrior states held loosely together by a king who won and held his throne by force of arms. Every clan who supported the king was headed by a thane, a rank equivalent to earl, conferred by the king. This is the story of one thane who aspired to be king and of the lady who drove him to reach for the prize. The haunting, bloody, tortured story of Macbeth, Thane of Glams. By heaven, Banquo, so foul and fair a day I have not seen. Uh, when the king hears of your deeds at arms, your future should be bright. Look! Look yonder through the mist! Oh, what are they? So wild in their attire and withered. They don't look like inhabitants of the earth. And yet are on it. Look. They beckon to us. And I am drawn to them. I must go. What are you doing here, sisters? And a bonfire in all this rain? <laughs> Who are you? Speak if you can. Oh. Macbeth, hail to thee, Thane of Glam. By Our Lady, she knows you. Oh, hail, Macbeth, hail to you, Thane of Cordo. By that title, then, she knows me not. Oh, hail, Macbeth, that shall be king hereafter. And there she proves she knows me not at all. Why could any prediction be more promising? Forgive me, sisters, but I believe that you can look into the seeds of time and tell which grain will grow and which will not. What fortune do you see for me? Hail, Banquo, lesser than Macbeth, but greater. Who shall be not so happy as Macbeth, yet much happier? Hail, Banquo, that shall be the father of kings, and yet no king himself. Banquo and Macbeth, oh, hail. Sisters, tell me more. Too late, old friend. Even the fire has melted into thin air. Your children shall be kings. And you to be king? <laughs> old Duncan would not like that so well. Uh -huh. Or his son, Malcolm, already named to succeed him. I don't think the fate of Corder would be so pleased either. Well, it should bother him little since he's alive and well. Yeah, I am anxious to get home to my lady. Come to the castle. And let's leave this melancholy heat behind us. What ho, the castle! Macbeth Macbeth and Banquo, weary, wet, and battle-worn, and in haste for the comfort of a fire, let down the drawbridge! Let down the drawbridge! Can he 
be doing at my castle? No doubt to bring honors and greetings from Duncan, our grateful king. But we shall soon find out, for he is waiting to greet us. Well, I'll spend little time on him. My lady, well, I want to welcome me home. You men, take the horses and see them groomed. Make bed. To the Thane of Gloms, I bring greetings from King Duncan for your victories against the invading Norsemen. And better still, I bring reward. I am instructed to greet you also as Thane of Cordor. How oh, can the devil speak true? How can I be dressed in Carter's robes? I have just left him alive and well. And I have left him more recently very dead. Dead? How? Treason. Confessed and proved. The penalty? Death. A traitor. That sniveling coward. Oh, no good, Banquo. I saw him die. And nothing he ever did in life became him like the way he left it. But let us spend no further time on him, Macbeth, an old friend and victor. Go, take the spoils of battle... Your lady knows of your honors and waits for you. Great clams. Worthy, Cordor. My husband and my darling. Mm. I am so proud of you, my new thane of Cordor. <laughs> Did Macduff's news surprise you? No. Oh, you know how <laughs> pleased you are. Mm, please, yes, after King's generosity. Surprised? No. Who else could have told you? Another woman. Then me. <laughs> I'd cut her heart out and yours. My bloodthirsty little eagle. But you would have had a hard time finding this one's heart. What are you talking about? Banquo and I were returning across the moor when suddenly we spied the fabled three. The weird sisters. Mm-hmm. Aye. They hailed me as Glams and Thane of Carter and more. More than that. What? I was also hailed <laughs> as king hereafter. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, indeed. Duncan is king. And I am not in succession. And yet, they say the sisters are possessed of more than mortal knowledge. I have some further proof. Hmm? What? Did not Macduff tell you that king comes here tonight? Tonight? Huh? How long will he stay? He plans to leave tomorrow. If he sees the sun tomorrow. What? What does that mean, my lady? (laughs) Oh, my dear husband. Your face is a book which is too easily read. What both of us are thinking. No, 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 no. It's beyond thought. We could not, cannot do this thing. Glance, you are. Cordor, you have become. And you shall be the third that was promised. Yet I am afraid you are too full of the milk of human kindness to seize the opportunity when it is offered you. Here comes the king now. I must go. The king must be provided for. He will be provided for. I did not Do not lie to yourself or me, only to the others. Look innocent as a lamb, but hold the serpent under. Go quickly, my lord Macbeth. Leave all the rest to me. The raven himself will be horse who croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan as I watch him here from the battlement. If there are spirits that can read a mortal's thoughts, come and unsex me here. Fill me from crown to toe with blackest cruelty, thicken my blood, drown all remorse. Come to my woman's breasts and turn my milk to gall. Bring down a night as black as all the smoke of hell. Hide me from seeing the wounds my keen knife makes and allow no pang of conscience to see through the blanket of the night that might cry, Hold, hold! This castle lies upon such pleasant land. The air is soft and gentle. I shall find a long rest here tonight, my lord Macbeth. I pray it may be the rest you seek. I have no doubt. My dear cousin, I owe you much. My loyalty alone pays for whatever I and Banquo have accomplished. God save the king. May I have your... Your Majesty's permission to withdraw a moment. Uh, We must all soon. The day has been long. If it were done, 
When tis done, then it were well, it were done quickly. If only the assassination were the be-all and end-all. How to jump the life to come when conscience shall turn the instrument of death back at me. He's here in double trust. First as I am his kinsman and his subject, then as his host. It is I who should bar the door against his murderer, not bear the knife myself. That he so many virtues of his that will plead like angels against the deep damnation of his taking off. I have no spur to prick my ambition, which overleaps itself. Who's there? No, no, my lady. What news? The king has finished supper. Why have you stayed so long away from the chamber? Has he asked for me? You know he has. We will proceed no further with this plan. I've won too much esteem to throw it all aside. Oh, what of your own esteem? Would you live a coward, letting I dare not wait upon I would like the cat in the old age? Peace, peace, I dare do all that may become a man. When you broached this venture to me, then you were a man. And suppose we fail. Why, then we fail. But screw your courage to the sticking point, and we will not fail. Listen to me. Duncan is old and tired and will sleep sound. I will so drug his two bodyguards with wine and wassail that neither sense nor memory will remain with them. While they lie drugged, you and I will finish the unguarded Duncan, and his officers shall bear the guilt. Mm, bring forth men, children only. <laughs> Your undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. We shall mark with blood the sleeping guards. And who can question that their stained and drawn daggers have done the deed? Who dares receive it any other way, torn and grief-stricken as we shall be at our benefactor's death? I am settled. So, away. And make all merry. False face must hide what our false hearts know. <laughs> this? Is this a dagger I see before me? It's handled toward my hand. Come. Come, let me clutch you. Ah, I have you not, but still I see you, and on your blade great gouts of blood. I know, I know. I see, but cannot touch you. You are only... A vision of the mind. Oh, God. Oh, God. Let no one hear my steps. For fear the very stones beneath my feet will cry out, Murder. Murder most foul. The signal. I go, and it is done. Hear it not, Duncan. For it's a knell that summons you to heaven. The castle sleeps, save for Macbeth and his lady. From the chamber she comes, a finger poised to her lips for silence. She nods to Macbeth that all is as planned. He nods in return, and drawing his dagger silently, pushes aside the tapestry and enters the king's chamber. I shall return shortly with Act Two. Night seems suspended in a vacuum, while a driven Lady Macbeth paces her chamber in the silent castle, waiting for her husband to carry out the bloody murder, which, without her purpose and drive, he might have shrunk from. There is a brooding and unnatural quiet, and the seconds seem endless to the waiting woman. The drink which lulled the watching guard to sleep has served to make me bold. What quenched them has set me on fire. What's that? Nothing but an owl shrieking. <laughs> Had Duncan not resembled my father as he slept, I would have done it myself. <gasps> He's coming. Well, my husband... I have 
done the deed. Did you not hear a noise? Only the owl scream. And it was you who spoke. When? Now. Is I descend? Yes. No. This is a sorry sight. What? Look on my hands. One of the bodyguards cried out in his sleep, God bless us, and the other, amen. Why could I not say amen? I had the most need of blessing, but it's stuck in my throat. You must not dwell on what is done. It could make us mad. Ah, uh, I thought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more. Macbeth has murdered sleep. And it's its sleep that knits up the raveled sleeve of care. The death of each day's life. The mom of hurt minds. Macbeth has murdered sleep. Give me the daggers. The sleeping and the dead can bring no harm. I hope he's bled enough that I can smear them well. For it must seem their ah. guilt. Sleep no more. Sleep no more. Could all the great oceans of the world wash this blood clean from my hands? No, no, no. These hands would rather all the multitudinous seas in Conodyne, making the green one red, bloody red. No, my hands are of your color. But I would be ashamed to wear a coward's heart of white. What's that knocking? The south gate. The porter will attend to it. Then let's retire to our chamber. A little water will wash away the blood. You see how easy it is. Remember who you are. Knowing that deed that I have done, I do not want to know myself. Wake, Duncan, with your knocking, then. I wish before God you could. Has my knocking disturbed your master, Porter? Ah, I see it has. Good morning, Uncle. Good morning, nephew Malcolm. I'm sorry you could not sup with us last night. My loss, noble Macbeth. Is my father stirring yet? I doubt it, I doubt it. I'll make the most of family ties and wake him by myself. Good morrow, good Banquo. And to you, young Malcolm. Mm -hmm. Macbeth, what brings him here at this ungodly hour? Oh, some business with his father, the king. Oh, it's of a piece with all the night. It was an unruly one with too much wine to sleep on well. Aye, it was a rough night. <laughs> Murder! What? Murder! Oh, that's that's, that's Malcolm. What's amiss? I cannot guess. My uncle, my good Benko, give me up. Steady, boy. My father is, my father dead. Wow. You, you mean his majesty? Impossible. What is afoot? Are we attacked? Yeah. Oh, far worse, Macduff. My father has been murdered. I'll not believe it. Stay you with the boy while I find out what's happened. Duncan dead? How? He's stabbed to the heart. Attend the boy. Ring the alarm bell. Seal up the castle! Murder and treason! Ring the bell! Gentlemen, what hideous noise is this to make the sleepers of the house? Oh, gentle lady, it is not for you to hear my answer. Let it come from a closer member to the house, Lady Macbeth. The king is dead. In his sleep? But he was so full of life and laughter only last night. If I had only died in battle before this came to happen, I would have been blessed. Macbeth, my husband, whose blood is on your hand. Aye. I can answer that. Brave Macbeth has taken swift revenge. As I came to the chamber, in a welter of blood, alive and unharmed, and fast asleep, lay the king's two guards. Aye, in a fury that I now repent, I slew them both. Why did you so fast? The revenge was mine by... Oh, my... dear Malcolm, who can be wise, amazed, temperate, furious, loyal, and neutral in a moment? No, man. Duncan lay on his bed, his white skin spattered with his life blood, and in my love, my anger outran reason. Oh, help me, hence. I am faint. Oh, look to the lady, Macduff. First, let us learn to control our grief. Then, when we can talk calmer, let us meet and question this most no, bloody no, piece of no, work. No, let me attend my wife. And once I see her safely settled, I will take hold of myself and put on my manly readiness and meet with you in the great hall. Fair enough. If any is fair at all. So let it be. What will you do, Macduff? What do you mean? I will not stay to share their show of sorrow. I'll flee to England. You realize your flight can make you scapegoat for the deed. You think I'd kill my own father? You stand in succession to the crown. Alive, I do. You think my uncle would have less compunction about removing me than he had my father? No, thank you. I will not take the chance. Nor will I be dainty about leaving... 
farewell, farewell, gentlemen. If gentlemen you be instead of traitors, too. What do you think, Banquo? I was not there to see. And you, Macduff? Sometimes the young are quick to sense a changing tide. I do not know. And yet I feel Macbeth will be king. I was too close to Duncan to enjoy Macbeth's full regard as you do, Banquo. I'll take discretion for the better part of valor and absent myself a while. It seems this is a time for swift goodbyes. Dead I, Macbeth, with this my pledge here on the sacred stone of Schoon, do humbly accept the crown and the honor my liegemen thus bestow in naming me their king. So now, Macbeth, you have it all. Just as the weird sisters promised. And even I, your friend, must fear you won it by the most foul of means. And yet the sisters said that I would father a line of kings. Though never be king myself. How can I read this? I must study it a while. And meanwhile, follow in your train to Inverness. Ladies and gentlemen, way for the king and his royal consort. Tonight, we hold a solemn feast, dear friend. May I request your presence? Let your highness command me. Command, Banquo. Not from friend to friend. Then I come both as my duty and my pleasure. As soon as I return. Mm, you're riding this afternoon. I must. Mm, a pity. I'd hoped for your good advice at the council table, but that can wait for tomorrow if you fail not our feast tonight. My lord, mm. fear not. Does your son ride with you? Fleance? Yes. Oh, to horse with you then. And ride swift and safe. Till we shall meet again. I think that that must be never. What said, my lord? Hush. I spoke at Banquo. I fear him. Mm. Mm, so do I. A king overshadowed by a subject? A king. But no father to kings, as the sisters promised him. What, what have, I, have I murdered gracious Duncan, destroyed my honor, peace of mind, my nightly rest, all to put his seat upon the throne? And must you suffer this? There is a man I told you of who hates Banquo. For well, what cause? Some fancy one, for he was sure to blame... A hangdog, cutthroat, drunken, brawling thief whom Banquo turned out of home and heart. Use him. I. Mm, so I will. See to it that our consul is seated and bid the attendant send in this man to me. I will obey you in all things. Obey or lead me to do them. It is understood then. Yes, my liege. Mm, you understand. I could with barefaced power sweep him from my sight, yet I must not, because of certain friends that are both his and mine. So I draw on your assistance to mask this from the common eye. I shall mm. perform, uh, we shall perform as you command. So, with all understood, leave me now. But it must be tonight. As sure as the sun will set. The sun will set. Banquo, your soul's flight. If it find heaven, must find it out tonight. Sire, the deed is done. There's blood upon your face. If so, it's Banquo's where I cut his throat. <laughs> he was mine. And the son. Sire, my friend failed me. He lies in a ditch with Banquo gaping from his many the boy, wounds. The boy, the boy. He escaped. I would I could have tended to them both. Uh, 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 no doubt you did your best. We'll talk again. Go. Yes. Yes, my liege. Banquo dead, the serpent gone. But the worm is fled to wet his serpent fangs for some future wound. Ah, uh, well, well, well. No teeth for the present. My royal lord, we need you here to give the toast. From thence to the source and meat is ceremony. Ah, uh, forgive my lapse. Affairs of state... Now they must stand aside for mirth and laughter and the festive board. First, as my sweet conscience has reminded me, the toast. 
Let good digestion wait on appetite and health on both. Long live the king! Long live the king! But not his friends. What? My lord, why are you staring at that empty chair? What empty chair? The one that's held for Banquo. And he is here. There's no one there. Then where? His ghost is waiting there. All blood. All blood. And calling me down to join him in the tomb. Around the table, the other guests are unaware of the delirium that racks their king. In quiet desperation, Lady Macbeth tries to hold her husband from disintegrating at the vision which stares across the table at him. His closest friend, Banquo, bleeding freely from a dozen wounds his eyes fixed and haunting on the man who lulled him to his violent death, a ghastly specter at the feast. I shall return shortly with Act Three. As Macbeth stares, riveted at the bleeding ghost of his friend Banquo across the table from him, slowly the awful vision fades, until the chair is empty again. Meanwhile, the guests at this festive board, gathered to celebrate the accession of their new king, have slowly, most of them, become aware of their host's strange disorder. Now, as we return to the feast from which the specter has left, Lady Macbeth tries quickly to reassure her husband. <laughs> Are you a man? A bold one that can look on what might well appall the devil. To look on what? Yeah. Where he sits. What kind of man? This is the imagined dagger you drew in air which you sniveled and led you to Duncan's shame. Such actions could become a woman's story at a winter's fire. You look on nothing but an empty chair. It's true. It's true. It's all imagining. My worthy lord, your, your noble friends are being overlooked. I do forget. I do forget. Don't be concerned, I pray you. I have this sometime infirmity which is nothing to those that know me. Come, give me a goblet, and we shall drink to our good friend Banquo. Would that he were here to fill that vacant chair. Macbeth, does murder sleep? Macbeth shall sleep no more. No! Quit my sight! Let the earth bury you! Must you break up the meeting, displace the murder? Blood has been shed before now. Time was when brains were out, a man would die and make an end, but now he rises again. Begone! Begone, horrible shadow! Unreal mockery. Do not haunt me. My lord is not himself tonight. Too worn with cares of state. I beg you, go at once to all good night. Stand not upon the order of your going. My lord, why keep these thoughts which should have died? What's done is done. Ah, oh, no, my lady, we have Scotch the snake, not killed it. Banquo is in his grave. All is safe at ah, last. All is safe? While Banquo's son lives to steal the throne from our children, while Macduff plans to join dead Duncan's son Malcolm to raise armies against us in England. I thought you sent for him in fight. Oh, so I did, but has he come? I'll send for him again. But by the Lord, if he has fled or plans to... I'll have his castle seized and put them all to the sword. Wife, babes, and every unfortunate soul that traces him in his line. Meanwhile, before I sleep tonight, I'll ride to the moors and find those sisters to forecast me better times. I must have peace. Peace at any price. Uh... Bubble, soil, and trouble, fire, burn, and cauldron, bubble. By the pricking of my thumb, something wicked this way comes. Open, lock, swear, not. <laughs> At last I find you, secret midnight hags. I conjure you by that which you profess to know. However you come by the knowledge, answer to what I ask you. We know the thought. Hear your answer. Macbeth, Macbeth, beware, Macduff. You read my fear right, but... Be bloody, my... bold, and resolute. Scorn the power of man, for none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. I've made assurance double, sure. Macduff should by now have been put to the sword. But still, 
Uneasy thoughts possess me. Put them by. Macbeth shall never be vanquished until great Barry Wood to high Dunsinane Hill shall come against him. Ah, ah, and that shall be never. Who can move the forest? Bid the tree tear out his earthbound roots. Macbeth shall live his life full of. But yet to snuff out false Macduff's, I'll not forget. <laughs> Macduff, what brought you here to England? I hear you think to raise an army to invade our unhappy land. What you want to know, believe. Your judgment is your own. This tyrant Macbeth, whose name alone blisters our tongues, was once thought honest. You have loved him, and he hasn't touched you yet. I am not treacherous. Ah, but Macbeth is. Your castle was surprised at the order of Macbeth. Your wife and all with him... Savagely slaughtered. What? M- my children, too? Wife, children, servants, all that could be found. Merciful heavens. Oh, my pretty one, did you say? Oh. <laughs> Hell kite, all oh, dispute it like a man. I shall do so, but first I must feel it as a man. Let it be the whetstone of your sword to strike your anger into glowing sparks. Oh, oh I could play the woman with my eyes and wail my sorrow with my tongue. But not for now. For now, bring me this fiend of Scotland front to front within the length of my sword! <laughs> What is it, Seymour? Uh, Your Majesty, forgive me. While you have been in the field with preparations for the English invasion, I have tried to keep all safe at home. But your poor lady... My lady, yes? Though closely in the doctor's care, her gentlewomen have reported to me disturbing signs... Well, speak, man, speak. ...that they have seen her rise nightly from her bed clad only in her gown and taking paper from her closet, write, fold it, write again, read it, seal it, return to bed, and all the while fast asleep. Hush. My liege may see for himself, for here she comes. Her eyes are open. Look closely. You will see that their sense is shut. Ah, look how she rubs her hands. For often at least a quarter by the hour. Here's a spot still. She speaks. Out, damn spot. Out, I say. Fie, my lord, fie. A soldier and afraid. What need have we to fear anything? No one can call us to account. We are too powerful to be questioned. Yet who would have thought the old man would have had so much blood in him? Marked you that, my lord? Still. Will these hands never be clean? They carry the smell of blood still. Oh, God. Oh, sweet, forgiving God. All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten it. This little hand. Oh, no, no. She cannot, should not bear the cross as heavy as I do. Wash your hands. Put on your nightgown. Banquo is buried. He cannot rise from his grave. To bed. Come, come, come. Give me your hand. What's done cannot be undone. To bed. To bed. To bed. I should follow her. If you will, Your Majesty, but her gentlewomen await to see her back there safely. Thank God forgive us all. Are there no doctors to minister to her, to cleanse her of the poison that weighs so perilously on her heart? The doctors say, as we must know, my liege, that where the mind is poisoned, the patient must minister to herself. Give me no more reports. Let them fly to the winds. They are less than an old hag's gossip till Burnham Wood shall come to Dunsinane. And that even the English cannot accomplish. What I should cower before this boy Malcolm, Duncan's son, was he still not born of woman? I'll scour these English from our Scottish land. I will not be afraid of Bane till Burnham Forest come to Dunsinane. What wood is this before us? The wood of Burnham, where we can gather an army unseen and prepare our attack on Macbeth's castle. But how to come across the valley in between? I have a thought. Suppose each soldier should hew down a bow and then... Holding it before him, advance slowly so that the castle under siege could not be sure of our numbers or where the main attack lay. By God, of all men, you may have fixed the course that will undo Macbeth. Hang our 
banners on the castle walls. The cry is still to come, but our castle strength will lay a siege to storm. What is that cry? I have thought I had forgotten the taste of fear. That I had sucked full of horrors and nothing else could make me start. Who cried out? Seymour! Yes, Macbeth. What was that cry? The queen, my lord, is dead. Ah! Ah! No! No. Ah, she should not have died now. But when there was time to mourn her, what... What's left for me? Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day. And all our yesterdays only serve to light fools the dusty way to death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. No more than an actor who struts and frets his hour upon the stage and with the curtain down is heard no more. No. Life is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, but signifying nothing. Now, Seymour, the, the, what the, is it? That I should have to, to bring this, this knowledge. I, Speak I, out, man. Though you may doubt my wit, sir, as I stood watch upon the turrets, I and others with me could swear that looking out to Burnham, the wood began to move. Liar and slave! I would to God I were! If you speak false, I'll hang you alive on the next tree. But still, I will take no chance. Ring the alarm bell! Ring out! Ring out! Let all prepare for siege! Blow in, Carmelac! At least we'll die with harness on our back! Under cover, my lord, and are at full attack. I'm tied to a stake. I cannot fly, or I must fight the course. Because I am safe. Who can I fear, since what man is not born of woman? Macbeth! Macbeth! Who calls me? Macbeth! Hello, Hans. Hello, Hans. Hello, the men I have tried to avoid thee. Get back from me. I have too much blood of your family on my hands already. I have no words for you. My voice is in my sword, you bloody villain. Oh, no, listen for your own sake. Cross not swords with me. I bear a charmed life. No man can harm me, a woman born. Then fear for your life, traitor, murderer, villain. You have no charm to save you. Macduff was not born of woman. What? I was from my mother's womb, untimely ripped. So yield, you coward! I will not yield to you or Malcolm or be baited by the rabble's curse. Though Burnham Wood has come to Dunsinane, and you make claim you are not born of woman, yet will I try to the last. Before my body, I bear my shield. Lay on Macduff, and damned be he who first tries! Hold it up! of course, is history. Whether by prophecy and the voice of the fates, or in the chance of battle, Macbeth was slain. A bloody corpse to lie beside the ones he made himself, and the still small body of his fierce and tender lady, who died not in blood, but from those hands from which she could not wash the blood of regicide away. That is the story of Macbeth. When you... a footnote to this drama. Within the body of our story, all the forecasts of those strange three sisters who haunted the barren Scottish moors came true. Save only one, which history had to wait to document. From the family of the murdered Banquo, eight kings ruled Scotland in succession, as foretold. While the royal family of Macbeth began and died in that one wicked, misled, tortured, tragic king. 
Our cast included Kevin McCarthy, Carol Titel, William Redfield, Court Benson, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Allied Van Lines. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Seating program is furnished by CBS Radio. This is WOR New York and RKO General Station.